Hey guys, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Today, we are going to be going over the all or nothing mindset, um, which I'm sure a lot of you clicked on this episode because you're like, please fix me. How do I get out of the all or nothing thinking? Um, and I very much so used to struggle with this. I don't know if Alex specifically did. Did you struggle with the all or nothing mentality? Yeah, I think that I struggle with it in the sense of um, anything that I'm going to do, I have to do it 100% or I'm not going to do it at all. So then, you know, I would say yes. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> like the definition of the all or nothing mentality. Um, and I know I grew up as a perfectionist through and through. That's what I anyone will tell you about me growing up and still to this day of me struggling with that aspect of wanting everything to be perfect. And I think the first step within this all or nothing mentality is being able to realize that nothing is ever going to be perfect. And I used to look at that as discouraging or just kind of like, well, if nothing's going to be perfect, then why even try? Um, but I've kind of come around to the, the thought process of uh, just because it's not going to be perfect doesn't mean I can't make it great, but I do need to see all sides of the spectrum instead of just looking at things one way. Because when we come to that all or nothing thinking, it is going to be a very common cognitive disorder or distortion. And so within that cognitive distortion, again, I'm sure a lot of you guys have um, dealt with this, but it basically means that you have a faulty thought pattern and you're living in the extremes and you're going to be more prone to those negative thoughts um, and kind of going with that thought process of, okay, every everything sucks now or why even do it? And it puts us in a place that we don't even challenge our thoughts and you're stuck in this one way of thinking. Um, and I'll say personally, being around Alex has actually helped me a ton with my all or nothing mentality because I was very much so trapped in the thought process of saying always or never or like well, I would do one thing wrong and I'd be like, I do everything wrong. Um, and it was really helpful to kind of have you to check me and to be like, like, was it everything or was it one or two things? Yeah. Um, and we would often ask each other, like, are you clumping? Um, and that was our way of saying, like, are you just taking one or two scenarios and clumping it all together and then putting the label of always, never, or um, one of those extreme words that we use when we talk about ourselves often? Yeah, I think that with the all or nothing mindset, it's something that's very emotionally driven. You're getting caught up in the aspect of either being fearful that you are not going to succeed or that you're not good at something. And so um, you're allowing emotion to to dictate your actions as a whole. And I think that that's something that you have to move away from uh, because like, you're not always going to be good at things. You're not always going to uh, be the best at something. There's going to be moments where you fall on your face and you have to be willing to do that that. And I think that the person who's able to move away from the all or nothing mindset and allow for themselves to make mistakes. And then once they make those mistakes and realize that the worst case scenario in their mind that they've created is not really a thing, um, it allows for them to open up, um, new passages and new boundaries that they may not have even known existed. And so then they're able to level up in their own life because they've allowed for themselves to get out of like this perfectionist or all or nothing mindset. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up of just being able to level up within life because I feel like truthfully, when I was able to get to a better spot with the all or nothing mindset, I'm not going to say that I never struggle with it anymore. It's a million times better, but that's really when my life did start leveling up. And I um, even struggled within the, um, when I first got into my fitness journey of that all or nothing being very prevalent. And I know, again, that might be where it is prevalent for you of, okay, if I'm not 100% with my food, then why even bother? Or if I've made one mistake, then who cares about the rest of the day? Or um, if I can't be in the gym six days a week and be perfect with my food, why even bother when it comes to going after my fitness goals? And what I found for myself when I truly had an internal conversation and was able to be honest with myself, a lot of that was coming from um, this thought process of I was living in a place of scarcity of thinking that I couldn't make the fitness thing work because I had started my fitness journey so many times and quote failed, um, aka I was new to it and adjusting 
to it and trying to figure out how to make it a lifestyle. So looking back, I really didn't fail. It was more of I didn't have something that fit my lifestyle or that worked for me or even the knowledge to understand what needed to be implemented for myself. And so I was in this place of scarcity and always thinking, well, um, I'm really not going to be able to do this because this seems a little bit too difficult. So I'm going to kind of self-sabotage. And because it's not perfect, I'm going to act like it's just not going to work for me ever. I think that uh, competing is something that is a uh, if you've gotten into fitness, you find yourself in a situation where you're in the all or nothing mindset, competing allows for you to stay in that because mm -hmm. it is something that is all or nothing where it's like you have to hit your food perfectly. You have to get all your training and you have to do all of your cardio. You have to do all these things uh, for it to work. And so it allows for the, the people who are the perfectionists to kind of get into something that continues to fuel something that's not overly positive for them in that sense. Um, because once like competing is not forever, you can't eat that way. You can't train that way. You can't uh, do all those those things for forever, unless your life completely orients around it for forever. Mm -hmm. um, like as you maybe get married, as you have kids, as you get into a different field of work, like things have to change because of reality. And individuals who haven't had the, the time to either be taught or to have an experience where it's not that way of it being all or nothing, it's really, really challenging. And they find themselves in a situation where from a, a, a mentality perspective, they're just chronically beating themselves up because they're comparing themselves to that that version of themselves where it's like, you're not that version any longer. Um, and, and you have to be able to have the experiences outside of it to be able to make fitness still a part of your life, but it, it, and navigate away from that all or nothing mindset. Yeah. And I, I think that you've talked about this being within this dieting phase for you of one of the first times that you've dieted without that all or nothing mindset and having to switch that thought process and figure out what it looks like for your life now. So when you first started this diet, was it a little bit difficult because you were thinking, oh, it, it kind of has to be all or nothing because that's been my experience in the past? Yeah, I, I think that... Um... I also had made the decision that it wasn't going to be like that before. Like I had had the experiences of trying to diet since competing and not being successful in that because I allowed for myself to hold myself back uh, because of that specific uh, nature. And so I went into this dieting phase understanding more so of what all the things that I have going on and understanding that I can elongate this you know, dieting phase if I need to because of the circumstances at hand. Like for instance, you know, last week I was sick for 10 straight days. Mm -hmm. Doesn't It's not really conducive. And, and in a prep that could you know, pull me out of it depending on mm -hmm. where it fell or what have you. And so in this scenario, it's something that I have to work through and be a okay with like, eh, these two in a half weeks kind of are a little bit of a wash from a training and nutrition standpoint, just because of the circumstances and that's okay. And so, um, I, I think that having that conversation with yourself and holding yourself accountable to what you, you know, set out to do prior, um, and, and having an understanding as to, you know, why you're doing the things that you're doing, um, is very important. And so having those standards in place was a big help for me, uh, to move out of that kind of mindset. Yeah. And I think that if you were in that mindset that either you could have made, you could have prolonged the sickness by trying to like push and do everything or kind of bottomed yourself out the other way of being like, since I'm sick, none of this matters. I'm just going to do whatever I want. Um, but since being sick, both of us have just really focused on getting back into our normal routine. We haven't tried to cut back food or cut back movement or add movement or anything to make up for that space. We've recognized that, hey, couldn't get around this. We were sick. What's the next best move? Um, so that's something that I often recommend to clients is instead of making that decision uh, out of pure emotion, being able to kind of take a step back and kind of triage and do some damage control of what is the next best step and what is the plan now because life happened and kind of circumstances popped up. Um, and so that's what I really like to talk about. 
And it was really helpful for me to be able to switch into a mindset and to be thinking about cars. Um, And the reason for this is because I grew up really hating that gray thinking. And so I was very black or white, on or off. I wanted an answer. I liked that clarity. Um, I really liked math because there was the answer and that was the answer. It wasn't subjective. It was literally that is the answer. Two plus two equals four. Um, And so when it came to, again, food and fitness, I was still stuck in I want the exact answer of what this is. Um, But being able to um, experience um, a few times where I got my car or my tire popped. Um, And at the time, I had a car that was very specialty tires to go ahead and get. And so when a tire popped, I had to wait like two or three weeks to get a new tire. And I would be just without a tire and it was no fun. And it was very expensive to get those specialty tires. And so when I was able to think about it in those instances where maybe um, you have a cookie and you're quote off track or off plan. Um, Instead of thinking, who cares, I just should eat whatever I want the rest of the day, I was able to think back to my car. And so when I got a flat tire, I didn't get out of the car and slash all of my other tires and say, well, I already have to get one replaced, might as well get all four replaced. Because first, that would be so expensive. Anyone who has had to replace a tire knows that. But the second part of it is it just doesn't make any sense to take it that route. And that was really helpful for me to recognize that I don't need to slash my tires. I just need to figure out what the plan is moving forward. So in those instances where it felt like, well, I'm not going to hit my macros perfectly, or I ate something off track, or I'm not being able to go to the gym today, um, instead of thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to go the other direction, I was able to stop and really think about what the plan was instead of having that mentality of, now it's time to slash my tires. Yeah, I think that the once you get to a place of understanding that multiple 80% days is much better than having one 100% day and then three 0% days and going back and forth between that, like being able to have those 70 to 80% days and being able to stack those being much more valuable than nailing it for you know three days a week or whatever it would be. Um, and, and once you have either an experience that lends you to seeing that for your own, um, or you're able to have conversation or listen to a podcast like this um, and have that click for you, it becomes a, a very freeing feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it allows for you from a self-talk standpoint to be in a much uh, more positive place because individuals who are in the all or nothing mindset and stuck in that um, I've been there and the, the self-talk that you have in that mindset is horrible. Um, it's probably the worst part of it all. Not even just the, the physical, you know, changes that come from it being kind of a, a such a highs and lows. Um, the, the mental aspect is probably the most tedious of it all. And I think that you realize once you get out of it, how mentally exhausting that once was and how much mental energy is freed up because you're just moving into a place of true self-acceptance. And I think that people view self-acceptance as like this free pass of you being a a jerk off basically. (laughs) And it's like, that's not what it is. I think that some people um, go into the extreme of self-acceptance and it does become this thing of like, I can do whatever I want. And because I am X, Y, and Z, this is okay. It doesn't matter. Whatever I do is I'm accepting it. And that's what it is. It's like, there is a middle ground to self-acceptance that is, is very important uh, for your overall well-being and getting to that point for everyone is is important. And I think that getting there takes time and everyone's going to work on their own schedule there. Um, but I think that there's a, a narrative around self-acceptance that uh, gets a, a bad rap because people do take it to that extreme. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. 
Yeah. And I, I like that you mentioned just kind of that self-talk because the all or nothing thinking affects us in a multitude of ways. So it's going to decrease your confidence and your self-esteem. It's going to have less willingness to take risks. You're going to feel like a failure, fear of asking for help, which is very real for myself, um, unable to think of solutions or find a middle ground. Again, you're living in those extremes, lack of self-compassion, which comes to that self-talk. Um, less resilience, and then unwilling or unable to forgive yourself. And that's really when we talk about that leveling up, all of these things were extremely prevalent in my life of how I was affected by that way of thinking. And a big part was I also had to be able to forgive myself for making mistakes and recognizing that you can learn from those mistakes instead of them just being the worst thing to ever do. Um, But also being able to know that um, I was able to flow and my life didn't have to stay one way or the other. Um, Because when it came to that all or nothing mentality and when it came to the negative self-talk that I was having, it felt like I was so stuck in it that I, I couldn't get out of it because I couldn't forgive myself enough. And I was like basically punishing myself more and more because I felt that I hadn't like truly felt the guilt or the the pain that I needed to for making that mistake. And so then I had myself holding into these moments much longer than I needed to. And this was honestly a realization that came to me um, just a, a week or so ago because I was having a bad body image day. And in the past, I kind of would have let that spiral and let that take hold of me um, and let me talk negatively about myself more and more and just kind of be like, well, you look like this because of this reason and perpetuate that thought process. Um, Whereas I kind of just let myself be neutral about it. And then when like the next day came, I did feel better about my physique. And I recognized that I was able to like give myself a compliment and move on. Whereas in the past, I would have thought like you're having a bad body image day, or you just had a bad body image day, like you have to keep being negative about your body. Um, And so that was really cool for me to experience a few weeks ago to recognize like I can be in flow and my emotions can change day to day and I can let them change. I don't have to either punish myself or stay thinking one way um, because I felt that way the day before because there's always an opportunity to change that thought process because you're always just one bite, um, one meal, one decision, one thought process process change away from being in a different spot. And that's really empowering when you're able to look at it from that lens instead of like forcing yourself to be stuck in the other ones. Yeah. And I think that brings up uh, another conversation of just one thing that allowed for me to get out of the all or nothing mindset is really understanding the value of momentum Um, and understanding that a lot of the things that maybe I was putting into my life, I was slowing my own momentum and creating the momentum to go in a negative sense because getting to go momentum to go in a positive manner is a little bit slower of an experience as a whole relative to letting it go in in a negative way. Things can steamroll in a negative sense much faster because it's just downhill and that snowball is getting thicker and thicker and getting faster and faster. Whereas, uh, when you realize the, the, value of momentum and uh, how you're speaking to yourself and how you're approaching uh, things, whether it be a, a failure that you've you've come short on from a goal perspective or a, a goal that you've accomplished and not putting too much weight in the thing that you've accomplished just as much as not putting too much weight in the thing that you have you know failed on, mm-hmm. for instance, and allowing for yourself to take those small wins throughout a day where you're able to, uh, you know, you're talking to yourself and it's like, I'm going to get up and go get get my water filled up because I know I need to get more water. But then you're like focusing on something from a work standpoint, but then you, you know, did what you said you were going to do and went and filled up your water. That's like, that's a small win. I know that that's something that's like, no, I should have just done that in general, but it's like, well, you had the opportunity to not do that. Mm -hmm. And thus you need to look at that as a win and kind of stack those small things from a day to day standpoint, especially if you're in the dumps, um, coming off of maybe some things that you've allowed things to kind of stockpile from a negative standpoint, um, and, and allow for yourself to really see the value in all the small victories that you have each and every day. 
Yeah, and I think that within those small victories, sometimes we get so caught up within comparison that we think, well, like you said, that should just be something that I do, or that's something that I've done in the past that was just a thing that I didn't celebrate. But being able to look at your life as something that is going to be malleable, it is going to change, your priorities are going to change, different goals you have are going to change, as well as the scenario or circumstance that you're in is going to change. And with that, you need need to be able to be malleable with life instead of being so stuck in like this is something that I should just already be doing or I used to do and not have any issues with where this might be a new time in your life that you kind of have to restructure what those habits are or what those things are that you always do Um, and when it comes to all or nothing it's really showing like the lack of critical thinking because you get so stuck in only seeing the negatives of a situation or again using those extreme words like all always never should or shouldn't. Um, And being in a spot where you can't look at things objectively of how it truly is going. Because again, in that car scenario, you're able to see very clearly, oh my gosh, that would be so silly to have the thought process of, oh, well, I've already had one cookie. I'm going to go ahead and have 12. But that's the thought process a lot of people do have within going with it when you're truthfully just slashing all of your all of your tires and putting yourself in a worse position than you would have been if you would have just stopped, really thought about the situation, and then made that next decision decision moving forward. And so when we're looking at that all or nothing mentality, one thing that's really helpful is to stop in those instances and try to relabel your thoughts or try to work through what you just said to yourself or said to someone else about yourself and being able to truly see if there's a different thought process or if there's a middle ground or if there's a different solution. Because if you get so caught up in just looking at things one way, again, you're not able to truly have that critical thinking. Um, And that's where you're also going to have problems and you're going to be told like you're standing in your own way because you can't think past that one way that you're thinking. Um, And that also turns into people not necessarily wanting to be around you. Um, And I, I don't want that to come off in a like well, you, you already think you stink and now people don't want to spend time with you. But truthfully, think about anyone in your life that's consistently negative and can't be able to see a different way of seeing the situation. That's extremely draining, not only to personally experience, but to be around. And so then you start to confirm those thought processes where re- in reality, it's just that that's really difficult to be around when you're not willing to change or see things from a different perspective. Right. And, and I think that an interesting part of being in the fitness industry is that from a collective community standpoint, um, you probably have a great majority of people who are all or nothing type individuals and individuals market in a way that it is all or nothing. If you're not doing this exact exercise, you're not going to grow this muscle group. Or if you're not dieting exactly this way, you're not going to lose the body fat that you need to. And when in reality, from a fitness community standpoint, almost everything is gray and it it is so dependent on the person and those different factors. And so um, that's one big thing that I feel like we focus on from a physique development standpoint is letting our clients know and educating as to how gray it really is and it not being in this absolute nature of how they have to approach their nutrition, how they have to approach their training uh, and putting themselves in an understanding or putting themselves in a place where they understand the different factors that go into it so they can make adjustments and not be in that mindset of it being all or nothing. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because when I was thinking back to when I was struggling the most with the all or nothing mindset. Um, And I kind of mentioned it or alluded to it at the beginning of not having the knowledge to truly make the best decisions or know what it looked like for it to be a lifestyle. And within physique development, that's like a huge, huge thing that we focus on is not each person is going to fit a mold and each person's life is going to call for something different. And I don't like to go by the thought process of, oh, it's just like hit your macros and like you'll see the 
the results where, yes, that's going to be one part of it of hitting the metrics that a coach puts in place. But the other big aspect of that is it's not always the fact that you're not disciplined enough to hit your macros. It just might be that that plan doesn't fit what your life is. And so you're likely not going to hit it because it doesn't work for you. That would literally be like me trying to copy someone's lifestyle that does not like commute to mine at all, doesn't compare to mine, doesn't make sense for me to try and follow their schedule and think that it's going to cause success for me. And so that was another huge thing was recognizing not only that it is very gray, but also recognizing that I was unique within my life. And if I was going to push myself to these different standards or molds, um, that was so unfair of me to do for myself because of everything that I had going on and everything that was so unique to me um, and unique to my situation and circumstance that was just unfair for me to kind of cast on myself. I'll give a, a real life example. Um, when we first started physique development, I had the clients that I was basically working with were all in college or freshly out of college or competitors. So like in terms of, of life that they were taking on, they had a lot of free time relative to the, the grand scheme of things. Um, and within that, it was a lot of just like hit your macros, like track your food, have these meals prepared and um, just do it type situation. Like that's the mentality that really I was taking to all the, the clients that I had, because in reality, they really just needed to be more disciplined. Almost all of them. I had a client, um, her name is Sarah Campbell. You may be listening. Hi, Sarah, if you're listening, um, that was a mother of three that were all under five. This is like the first client for me that I had worked with that was not in the college, you know, fresh out of college or in college. And so mother of three, um, single mother of three at the time, actually. And, uh, she was running around with them and she's a, she was, she is a teacher. And so being at school from 7 AM to 3 PM, 4 PM, um, not being able to eat food during that time frame, And we really had to, like, it wasn't a matter of discipline. It was a matter of finding structure to her nutrition. And so that was a very eye opening thing from a coaching standpoint for me of like, Oh, like it, it goes much deeper than just being more disciplined. Like you, you have the, the statement of like, everyone has the same 24 hours and from a time standpoint, I suppose, but the reality of everyone's life is that it looks vastly different and the approach has to be more specific to the person. It's not just a matter of you need to do an hour of cardio, you need to do an hour of training and you have to hit all of your macros perfectly. It's like that only works for a small demographic of individuals, whereas the, the plan for Sarah, for example, was a matter of like, how can we figure this out into three meals? You've got three opportunities throughout your day. How can we best fuel you from a, a, a day-to-day standpoint and get nutrients in and have you feeling nourished in those different aspects rather than here you have 140 grams of protein, you've got 200 carb, 50 fat, good luck. Mm-hmm. See, like, just make sure you hit it, put it in your tracker. And I hope to see next week that you've nailed everything. It's like there had to be much more teaching and hands-on experience or, or coaching with her, for example. And this, this goes for like over the eight years that we've been doing this now, thousands of individuals that we've done this with. Um, and it really was an eye-opening experience on my end of things that it is not just so black and white of do this and not do this. Um, and it becomes so much more gray. Yeah. And it's it's setting those clients up for success and being able to recognize like I – always try to look at what my clients day to day is, what their um, goals within life are so that they can also see where fitness falls on that of, hey, I have this family that I am caring for and I need to also care for myself. And I do have these career aspirations as well. Um, So where does fitness fall in that priority list? And it's okay if it's not number one. It's not number one for me. There's a lot of other things that I that have priority is fitness and taking care of my body and health still a very top priority? Yes. But when I really think about it and you think about your priorities as a whole, if it were to come down to do I do this or this, I know that like going to train is probably going to be lower than like 
being able to show up for Alex or show up for our marriage when push comes to shove. Therefore, fitness is a lower priority than our marriage. Um, and so being able to recognize that that isn't bad, that it's not your number one priority, but it's seeing how it fits into your life. And if I have clients that are getting to the point where at the end of each day, so for example, I have a client who's a type one diabetic and we originally had each macro laid out for her and she was getting very discouraged because there's times where her blood sugar would drop and she would need to have more carbs in place and she would get very upset because she wasn't hitting her numbers. And I was like, hey, let's go ahead and just have a calorie goal and a protein goal and let the other numbers fall where they have to based on what your body needs. And she's been able to see so much more success by just changing that one metric and being able to give her that peace of mind that she's not failing. And so sometimes it isn't discipline. It's just that the plan needs to change so that it fits your life and your lifestyle as a whole. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box, and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options, complete with a timer in there, videos to the training, and everything else you need to be successful. So I can't wait to hear how much you love it. So digging into the all or nothing mentality, a little bit more of some more actionable things that you can do to combat it, because I think that we've had a lot of great examples here and being able to talk about it in our own life. I would like to add one more example. Yeah. Because I think that uh, like individuals who are getting into a reverse diet, whether it be from a competitive uh, season or it just be from a long dieting phase from a lifestyle perspective, I think a lot of people fall into the category of like, all right, from a reverse dieting standpoint, this is the standard, whatever they've consumed from a, a content standpoint, a research perspective, they feel as though that they, it needs to be gradual. It needs to look exactly like this. I need to gain as minimal body fat as humanly possible. And I'm going to have like my hunger signaling is going to be fine. My hormonal signaling is going to be fine. And the reality is, is that Every reverse that I've done this year, I think this is probably the most successful reverse dieting that I've done within a lot of our clients this mm -hmm. year. I would agree with that. Um, it's been the the quickest that I've restored hormonal function. It's been the quickest that I've gotten clients to be in a, a maintenance phase as well as um, it's been the most successful from an adherence standpoint because I think that the uh, guidelines that I put into place have been more specific to the person rather than it being like, this is exactly what you need to do. And it being the same for every person, we're going to gradually increase calories. Like some individuals have been able to have a more gradual reverse. Some of them have had a more like, we're going to get right back to maintenance as soon as humanly possible. And finding what's going to be best for them from a training standpoint as well, because uh, if you look at it just from like a standard perspective, reverse diets are going to be one where you are taking training volume down a little bit, allowing for the body to recover, um, but also being very slow with bringing up food as well. And so one of the things that I've done this year, and I think we've talked about this on the podcast, is that I've been more aggressive with training, but I've also been very aggressive with bringing food up. And that's been more enjoyable for some of the clients that it aligned well with. And I think that um, when you're looking at a reverse diet, being so vocal with your coach of like where you're at from a mentality standpoint, and if that coach has adequate experience and understands how to work with you as the individual and has been able to collect data and, and has been working with you for some time, the plan can be so much better structured for that individual. Um, and get, and I, I can say from a coaching standpoint, the reward and uh, feeling of accomplishment that I get when we get to a place of, okay, I feel great. I, I feel like my relationship with food is in a great spot. I feel like I'm not having weird hunger signaling. I think my training is going well. My sleep is great. Uh, my hormonal function is improving. My sex drive is coming back. All these different things is such a gratifying feeling on my end of things because it's not only am I helping them from a body composition standpoint and their training, but I'm helping from like a life perspective. Like mm -hmm. that is to not have those things in alignment is such a mental hurdle and so challenging to like, you can dig yourself into such a hole with those factors that I just talked about. 
not being in alignment. Mm-hmm. And so I get such a gratifying and accomplishment, accomplishing feeling from being able to provide that for clients. Yeah, I, I'm very glad that you did um, add that to the examples. And if you're a coach listening to this, let this be an example to you to not like be stuck to a plan um, or be stuck to a structure. Because I know for my clients that have been reversing from shows, like having that mindset of recognizing each person is different is going to need a different plan has been so helpful because actually this morning doing check-ins, a client was just saying like how happy she was of where her relationship with food is, how she felt in her body, how her sleep was going, how everything was going within this reverse. She's 21 weeks post-show and she has crushed it. And it's been a little bit different plan than I would have done with someone else. And she also ended up like pulling her hamstring right after prep. So that put our training in a different spot where I struggled at the beginning of being in the spot of, oh my gosh, if she's not training as much and um, she's needing a little bit more flexibility with food right now now that we're not going to be able to get her in the best spot. And I was so wrong with that of just being able to recognize like just because it's not done one way doesn't mean it's not done the correct way. And that has been so freeing for me and I'm sure for the clients of just knowing that they have a plan that's made for them specifically. Um, And so that's where a lot of us get trapped up is just kind of applying a plan that just doesn't make sense of putting that um, square in that round hole um, where we can just be a little bit more conscientious of what each person needs. Um, So going into a few things that you can do to combat it. So number one is going to be to learn how to spot that all or nothing mentality. So knowing what those words or those phrases are for you. And mine were definitely of like the clumping aspect of knowing once one or two things went wrong, it was I always mess up or I never do anything correct. And so being aware of when I used those words, I was able to really catch myself. um, And it became a game of just being able to, um, like, it became a game of noticing instead of a game of am I right or am I wrong? Did I fail or did I pass? It just became something that I was allowing myself to notice. And so that was really helpful because it started to be just a game of could I notice when I was doing it? Could I catch myself in it? Now, that didn't always mean that I immediately changed my thought process and everything was perfect, but it's that game of noticing and really pushing yourself to notice because that also helps within that black or white thinking of if you're able to kind of catch on when it's happening, you're able to start making the changes forward that you need to. Um, So being able to learn how to spot it or know what those are for you um, and being able to know those triggers so that you can kind of have a second to stop and think on it. Um, Another thing here is going to be to outline the situation. So I often immediately go to I'm a failure. Um, But when I'm able to realistically stop and describe the situation and take the emotion out of it, things are able to clear up a little bit more. Um, And so really just talking through what the scenario is, what the situation is, without allowing myself to talk negatively about myself um, is extremely helpful because you are able just to see exactly what happened instead of getting caught up within that emotion of it all. Um, With the next thing here, it's going to be to change the narrative. Um, So once you capture that initial thought, being able to um, really take a second to see if it is true. Um, So that's going to come within outlining the situation, but changing that narrative once you have outlined the situation and then being able to go back to emotion. So while it is helpful to take the emotion out of uh, the conversation in the beginning so that you're really able to look at things objectively, being able to come back to the emotion and figure out what emotion you are feeling. And this was a huge one for me of being able to recognize what I was feeling at the root of it so that I could address that emotion. So whether that is something like frustration because I feel like I failed again or I've let myself down or let someone else down, or maybe it was like overwhelmed with what everything I had to do. And so it was like, I never get anything done when it's like you're just actually feeling 
feeling an extreme amount of overwhelm. Um, or even if it's something of like a relief that you don't have to keep working towards a change that's going to take time um, and be something that is going to end up being an excuse. So really being able to get to the core of what the emotion is that you're feeling um, instead of falling into that all or nothing mentality can be extremely helpful. Um, and then being able to figure out what would have happened next. And Alex mentioned this of just either being able to go to worst case scenario, which might seem kind of backwards of being like, shouldn't I go to best case scenario? But I do like that opposite thinking. It doesn't work for everyone, but being able to see like worst case scenario, what happens and making myself okay with worst case scenario. And that took away some of that fear and those emotions because it was like, if this is literally worst case scenario, I'm okay with that. So now there's not this overwhelming fear and frustration towards myself. I can just start making the steps forward because I'd rather have best case scenario. Um, but it's also great to be able to take that and recognize if you've gotten further in the thought process than the previous time that you've done something. So if you're able to notice and have a conversation with yourself, even if you're not able to make the change in that moment, being able to celebrate that you made it further through the process and were able to make one better decision than getting caught up of, oh, I still haven't gotten it figured out or I'm still in that thought process. And I think that one thing that you can add to the worst case scenario, and this doesn't apply to absolutely everything, but I will say that if I think about something of, of the worst case scenario, and then I put myself in a in a situation where that thing has happened a hundred times before, like I'm, I'm thinking of it in the context of like, this is the hundredth time this has happened to me is it really that big of a deal? It's like the big thing for me is like, if it's happened a hundred times, is it as important as I'm making it in my head if it just happens this one time? And so then that kind of allows for me to zoom even further out to understand how valuable I'm making these different possibilities in my own head. And so it, it allows for me to have a better value um, evaluation of the, you know, things that I'm, I'm creating in my own mind. And I think that one thing that's helped me get out of the all or nothing mindset has been focusing much more on the process of doing things rather than the outcome of those things. Um, and this kind of comes to uh, individual, like this, I'll, I'll use social media as an example where uh, we post a lot from a, a YouTube and Instagram and, and TikTok, all those things, and focusing much more on the process of like getting that content created, as well as it looking at it as something where I'm just documenting my life. And 10 years from now, I'm going to be able to look back and watch all these videos and laugh about maybe me being upset that it didn't go as well as it did or whatever the, the situation may be of just documenting, being able to reflect on it and then also just falling in love with the process of, of, of creating these different things, whether that be from like, it could be your training and your nutrition. It could be whatever the aspect is, especially uh, if you are building your own business, if you're doing all these different factors, you have to fall in love with the process because if you're only focusing on the outcomes, it gets very defeating because one, um, the outcome is not overly dictated by you. It's generally dictated by something that's out of your control. Um, so that's not, you know, totally fair to yourself when you are saying it's a pass or fail grade, depending on that thing. Um, but also it just becomes something where you're spending a majority of the time creating or doing the thing. And the outcome is like, 1% of this entire equation and you're basing all of your enjoyment or satisfaction off of that 1% where the 99% of doing the thing was, you know, majority of what you're doing. And so finding enjoyment in that and finding peace within the creation or, or doing things is going to help tremendously, I think. Yeah. And I, I think that within the, the process, it's being able to recognize and get to the core of why you are doing something. Um, because if we're circling back to like health and fitness goals, I was in that all or nothing mentality because like I mentioned, I hadn't figured out how it fit into my life or even why it was important to me or the reasons it was important weren't that important. And so I was failing because I 
I didn't have a good reason for doing it. And so it didn't hold weight in my life and I didn't make it a priority. And the more that within fitness as a whole, I've really been able to focus on what is the purpose of me doing this and keeping that at the core when I have moments where things aren't perfect or um things don't go the way I want them to, or the outcome isn't where I want it to, I'm able to truly look at, well, what is the what is the process and what is the why behind that process? And that's always extremely helpful because I'm not doing things out of a place of guilt or frustration. I'm doing them out of a place of, um, I really love training. I love being able to take care of my health. I love the way it makes me feel. And so if I'm always able to come back to that within the process, then the outcome is a little bit less important as a whole. Um, So I very much so agree with you on that aspect. Um, And one thing that I saw as a quote within uh, the all or nothing mentality is just being able, it's or the quote says, it limits your ability to see the exceptions that exist. And if you're anticipating it's never going to improve, it never will. Um, And as soon as I read that quote, I was like, wow, I need to include this within the podcast because it just hit home so hard for Sue, like, five, six, seven years ago of being in this place where I did not allow myself to see exceptions. I only allowed myself to see one way of thinking. And then it's kind of that same thought process of like, whether you do, you believe you can or you can't, like you're correct. And it it truly is of like, if you're anticipating it's never going to improve, it never will because you are the driver, you are the facilitator. And so if you're always in the thought process that it's never going to improve, or you always are wrong, or you always mess up, or you're just a screw up, that's where your mindset is going to go. And that's what you're going to be stuck in again and again. And that brings me back to just allowing yourself to flow, allowing yourself to recognize that life is going to happen, it's going to change, and you have to be able to change with it and recognize that either goals are going to change, priorities are going to change, but you are also going to change. And so with that, you need to allow yourself some grace to change and to figure out what life looks like for you within that instead of just that one way thinking. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us unless Alex has anything else to add. No, I think this was a very helpful episode for sure. Yeah. So if you're watching this on YouTube um, and then or if you're listening to it and you want to go over to YouTube to comment below, um, we'd love to be able to hear kind of what you were able to get out of this podcast um, or what was very helpful for you. Or if you have something else that's helped within the all or nothing mindset, being able to comment it um, below so that anyone else watching this can get some more examples or to be able to learn from your experience as well. Um, I love being able to read your all's comments and just being able to have that interaction. So I'll be popping in um, with comments and just being able to touch base with you guys. But thank you so, so much for listening. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you give this a thumbs up um, and subscribe. And you can go ahead and hit that notification bell if you already are subscribed and you want to be notified on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday when we upload videos. Um, And if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, being able to give us a um, review on that podcast platform would be incredible as well. So thank you guys so much and we'll catch you in the next episode.